Hi guys and welcome to another tutorial on iOS development. In this tutorial we're going to talk about storyboards, uh, what they are, what their components are and how you can actually use them within your projects. We're also going to be building a very simplistic application using storyboards so you can kind of get an idea firsthand as to how these get used. Okay, let's get started. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about what storyboards or storyboarding actually is. So storyboarding is this new way to create user interfaces for your iOS applications. Uh, it's been available, I believe, since Xcode 4.2 and iOS 5. And when you're using storyboards, essentially what you're doing is you can design the view controllers that compose your application as something called scenes in the Xcode design canvas and then you can also define the navigation between the scenes using something called segways. So in essence what that really just means is that storyboards are, are a visual representation of our app layout. So they'll show us the different view controllers that comprise our app and the connections between the different view controllers. Now typically when you want to use storyboards you have to enable it when you first create your project in Xcode. Now, that being said, if you've got a project that you didn't enable it on, there's actually a way to enable it sort of retroactively. Um, so you can go after the fact and enable storyboards for your project. Now, if you're interested in doing something like that, do a quick search in your favorite search engine for something called Converting to Storyboards Release Notes. That should get you to a document that Apple's put up as part of its iOS developer library that does a really great job about walking you through how you can actually do that. Also, when you first create your project, one of the first things you're going to notice is that your project has no XIB or NIP files. This is because with storyboards, we actually have a different file type called .storyboard that we work with it. That being said, let's move on to the two big components that um, you're going to hear over and over again when you're working with storyboards. One is scene. So a scene is essentially a visual representation of our view controller. So when we drag a view controller onto our screen, or our canvas, that's called a scene. And one storyboard, as you can expect, will have or can have many different scenes. Now, the different view controllers of the different scenes are connected using something called segways. And I've tried to phonetically break this down because I've heard some mispronunciations of this term. It's pronounced segways. And that's very much like, of course, the segway device if you've ever been on one. Uh, that's a lot of fun. Um, the segways essentially show how two scenes might be connected. And they're typically accompanied by some kind of a visual transition. Could be a slide up, could be a page curl effect, um, things like that. And they're also typically triggered by a user action. So maybe the user does something, they touch a row, they touch a button, and that triggers the segue. Um, and when we're working with segways, uh, we'll see this as um, we do some more tutorials where uh, there's a little bit more complicated stuff going on. We make use of this new method that's available to us as part, uh, when we use storyboards, it's called prepare for segway colon sender. And that allows us to detect when a segway needs to occur um, and things like that. All right, so let's get started. Let's actually start working with Xcode and create a new project. So I'm just going to go to file new project and wait for Xcode to load up here and I'll just drag this to the center of the screen so you can see it a little bit better and uh, right okay so we'll pick a single view application and I'm just gonna hit next it's gonna ask me what I want the product name to be and I'm just going to call this storyboard example now the key thing of course here is uh, a couple of things to notice towards the bottom half of the screen. I've got the device family set to iPhone and that's no problem, we could have changed that. But the key thing here is that I've got use storyboards check and that's important. We also do want use automatic reference counting check and I'm just going to hit next. It's going to ask me where I want to save my project, I just want to create it on the desktop, I'm going to hit create. And now Xcode's going to essentially do um, the work of creating the project, it's going to scan for working copies, it might also do some indexing real quick. And um, as Xcode's finishing up, let me just point out, of course, here on the left-hand side, underneath the project navigator, that um, we have no nib file, like I said earlier. Instead, we have this main storyboard.storyboard .storyboard file. And this is where we're going to do all of our work. So let's get started. I'm going to jump into that file. And you'll notice that I have one view controller on my canvas. And there's an error to the left of that view controller. Now, what that actually means is that this is my starting view controller. 
right? So this is the first view controller that's going to get loaded. Now, what I want to do is, of course, drag another view controller onto screen. So let's go ahead and do that. So I've got my objects library open here, and I'm just going to drag a view controller onto the screen and let go. And now, of course, that is pretty close to this. So I'm just going to hit this little minus button to scale back the canvas. And I'm going to drag this apart just a little bit so I can see it a little bit easier. And then I'll hit the equal button to come back to sort of the 100% view. All right, so with that done, I'm going to click into this first view controller, and what that actually does is just selects the view. So the way this actually works is if I click in, I select the view, or I select another object. If I click this little button here, it selects the entire view controller. So select the view, or select the entire view controller and everything in it. So I'm going to just select this view, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the background color, because I'd like to make that transition a little bit more apparent. And I'm going to maybe pick the group table view background color that sets that to there. Then let's select the second view controller that we just dragged onto the screen. And we'll select the second view within that view controller and change its background color to maybe the scroll view texture background color. Great. OK, with this done, what I'm going to do next is drag a UI button object onto my first view controller and let that go. And maybe I'll just fill this in and we'll call this. Um, modal view controller and the objective of course here would be for us to be able to click this button and load the second view controller so here's how easy it is to set that particular functionality up I can either just um, right click and drag a connection here and let go and it's going to ask me what kind of a segue I want push modal or custom um, I'm going to be selecting modal but let me just back out here real quick I could also just right click this button and then it gives me the same exact options and this time I'll just select modal so any one of those options would work and now you notice that we've got a segue or a transition that occurs between these two view controllers so let me do one more uh, piece of busy work here I'm gonna drag a UI label object onto my screen and we'll just set it up maybe somewhere here and um, one of the things, um, some of you may already know this, is, but w when you have a UI label, it typically only allows you to put in one line of text. And if you look at the sort of properties inspector here, or the attributes inspector, I'm sorry, you'll notice that under lines, we've got it set to one. Now here's a little tip. If you change this to zero, you can actually have multiple lines. So now I'm going to change this. So we'll make something really apparent like modal view controller loaded. All right, do that. And of course, this is too narrow, so it's having some difficulty. I'm just going to stretch this out a little bit and drag this up. And we'll maybe center it so it's a little more apparent. And we can probably make this a little bit wider. All right, we'll leave it there. OK, great. So that's done. And also do this. So let's scooch it up a little bit, drag that down. Cool. All right, so now we've got essentially a setup where we've got two view controllers. There's a segue occurring between them. We've got a button that's tied to this or forces this segue to occur. And technically, we could run our application at this point. And you'll see that we actually have a small problem with it. Um, it's, of course, going to compile just fine, build just fine. Um, it's going to create the application just fine. But you'll see the actual problem we have in just one second when it loads up in the simulator. So here comes the simulator. And here's the application getting... Um, installed and you see of course our first view controller here with our UI button I click it and the transition occurs and I see my second view controller everything's dandy well my problem here of course is I have no way of getting back to that first view controller so I have no way of dismissing this particular view controller um, that is however easy to fix so what we'll do is let's go ahead and stop this application and one of the first things we want to do of course is we have to create a custom view controller class so the way we would do that is let's just select this I'm gonna to go to Xcode and say file new or command n I believe uh, will also get you there and we are going to create a new objective C class I'm of course under iOS Cocoa touch and objective C class hit next and I'm gonna make it a subclass of UI view controller and I'm gonna call this class modal view controller you can call it anything you like and I'm going to leave the with XIB for user interface option unchecked hit next it's going to ask me where I'd like to save it and I'll just save it here within my project files hit create and there we are we've got that set up so let me just drag this in for uh, to keep everything clean so now what I can actually do is I can jump back into our main storyboard our storyboard file and fix one of the issues that we've got 
so we need to be able to create a button for this particular view controller class well one of our problems is going to be that our current view controller is actually tied to the base UI view controller class and that's not going to allow us to really create a button so what we will want to do of course is change that so what I do here is I come down and select this and it selects the entire view controller for me then I will then switch over to the identity inspector and you'll notice that the class here is defaults to the UI view controller class I'm going to use this drop down and select that custom view controller UI view controller class that I created and that changes it to that I'm going to hit command s now what I can do is open up the editor and have that or actually let's hold off on that just real quick because we want to add one more object we actually need a button don't we so UI button we'll drag that onto our screen or our view controller here and I'm going to just type in done it seems like fairly apparent as to what that would do and now we can select the editor and what I can do now is create an IB action to this particular um, uh, for this particular button so of course the way I did that is I right clicked and dragged the connection here it's gonna ask me what I want to do it's gonna ask do I want an outlet no I actually do want an action and I'm going to say um, we'll just call this action let's call it dismiss uh, VC like that and then of course the event is touch up inside and that's great we hit connect let's give ourselves a little bit of space here command us to save I'm now going to go back to my standard editor and I'm going to jump back into my modal view controllers implementation file and find that method that we just created of course because we use the editor the assistant editor it added in both the header file and the implementation file sort of basic structure and we'll jump down here and here all we have to do is make one call we're gonna make it on self and we're gonna call the method dismiss modal view controller it takes one parameter and it's a boolean value we're just gonna set it to yes command us to save and we are now good to go so we can now run this application and wait for the similar simulator to come up on screen and here it comes and again we've got our same view controller our button when I click it this time I get my second view controller and if I hit the done it dismisses that view controller so that's it perfect now if you remember our original example actually had a page curl effect and I said I'd show you how to do that and we can do that very easily so let me stop running this application on the simulator jump back into my storyboard and here for this particular segue I can actually if I click on it and I've got uh, the um, properties inspector or the attributes inspector available you'll notice that I can of course give this particular segue a name and I can certainly do that if I've got multiple segues I don't need to do that in this case what I really want to affect here is the transition property you'll see that it's set to default which is sort of slide up and what I can do is just change this to something different like partial curl you're welcome to try some of the other options I'm just gonna change it to partial curl run the application again and this time you'll see that our transition has or has changed for that particular segue to the partial curl effect and that's great so it's also interesting to note that you can move these objects up and down in this view controller and this curl would sort of adjust itself automatically and that's sort of the power of working with storyboards it makes life a whole lot easier when we are working with some of that stuff and I would encourage all developers to both get a feel for working within the storyboard sort of setup so if you've got sample code or you're working on another project with a colleague you know you know how to work with storyboards if that's what they prefer but also don't depend entirely on this particular um, setup you know make sure you also work on projects where you do everything by hand um, everything in code so I hope this has been helpful uh, this will be um, hopefully a good primer for some of the other tutorials that I'm about to create uh, where I will be using the storyboard to show you how easy it is to create sort of master detail or navigation based um, applications that load a detail view so thanks for watching and we'll catch you in another tutorial